Porting a game should be, in theory, simple, right? I mean, you've got the actual game already made and all you need to do is convert it to different hardware. Well, actually, there's a ton of factors that developers need to face when transferring titles to new homes, namely programming, architecture, means of delivery, button mapping, and that's before you consider all the added features that often get included when they shift camps. Yet sometimes developers drop the ball so hard that they become legendary. And that's what we're here to look at today. And before I begin, I'm not saying that these games are bad. In many cases, the examples are just good games being turned rogue, so bear that in mind as we move forward. I'm Jules Whatculture.com, your one per list wonder, and these are 10 video games absolutely butchered through terrible ports. And speaking of one per lists, I've actually finally got a t shirt out that you can now buy from shop.whatculture.com. Here's an image of me looking lovely in it, and if you want some of me all over you, uh, wait, that, that, came, that came out wrong, then go visit shop.whatculture.com and show your support for the best thing about this f channel, me. Number 10, Lego Racers, PC to PlayStation 1. We begin this list with a trip down memory lane for many, as Lego Racers was undoubtedly one of the hardest video games aimed at children released on the PS1, PC, and N64. The concept might have been all cutesy, centering on building and then racing cars across well-known and well-loved Lego locales, but in delivery, the PS1 port of this game absolutely destroyed any notion of relaxed fun. For a start, the game was hard in its own right, with races against boss characters often coming down to the wire and even requiring an in-depth knowledge of tracks that would test even F-Zero GX veterans. And secondly, the PS1 port contained input lag. Yes, you heard me right, a game that required weirdly accurate turns and routes contained input lag, meaning that in order to best this blocky beast you'd need to preempt your moves before you even needed to commit to them. This coupled with excruciating loading times meant that inevitable restarts would test the patience of any gamer, young or old. And what we have here is a port that is a post-it note of pain. Number 9. Thundercross – Japanese to American Arcades now this next one is actually more of a localization port issue than anything else, but seeing as Thunder Cross released in Japanese arcades first and then the rest of the world, I'm counting it for this list. And for good reason I might add, because the US version of this game was disgusting. Taking all of the intense action of a bloody good arcade game and turning it into a hot turd. As you can probably see by now, the game is absolutely chock full of things trying to kill you, and the screen is more often than not awash with colourful explosions and oddly shaped laser beams. Therefore, it's quite essential to make sure that you equip your vehicle with the best possible death-dealing devices, which is then impossible to do in the American arcade version, as all of the weapons except the Vulcan cannon and little baby smart bombs have been removed. And you can't even change the loadouts in the back end of the game because the options were, get this, totally non-adjustable. Oh, and also fire was disabled as well, meaning that both fingers and patience got pushed to breaking point with this port. Number 8. South Park – N64 to PS1 now here's the thing, I am not saying that the original South Park game on the N64 was good, far from it in fact, with it being one of the most laughably bad games that me and my cousin spend hours on thanks to the so bad it's good multiplayer. However, next to the PS1 port it's an absolute shining gem as the PlayStation counterpart is like a goddamn terminal illness. The N64 version already suffered with a terrible draw distance, audio that sounded like it was recorded inside someone's mouth and had controls that handled things about as well as your mum when I turned her down for that second date, I'm literally the reason why she drinks, there's my one per list, but the PS1 managed to outdo all of this, somehow. The draw distance was now on Silent Hill levels of fog, the frame rate skipped all over the place, and the worst thing is, is that the multiplayer maps dropped their names and instead just had item number coding as their headers. It stunk of a terrible port and was an absolute bomb on the little grey machine. Things got so bad with this title that it's why Matt Stone and Trey Parker refused to make another video game for ages until it could be done right. Number 7. Ghosts and Goblins – Arcade to the Nintendo Entertainment System when porting a lot of arcade titles to their home entertainment system, Nintendo often employed the services of company Macronix to convert them. This had some mixed results, but arguably one of the worst and most egregious came when Macronix helped port Ghosts and Goblins. 
The game is well known for being a rock solid title. However, those that played it in the arcade and thought that they would be able to transfer their skills across would have their armor knocked right off them. As here on the NES, there were a slew of issues introduced not found in the glorious coin slot version. Issues such as long load times and game breaking bugs, but one of the most reported was that the controls took a nosedive and were much less responsive than the arcade version. And that's to say nothing of the sound effects that ranged from ear piercingly shrill, aka the Josh Brown of sound, to the overlapping and repetitive mess, aka the Scott Telford wall of noise. Things got even worse for the Japanese market though, as it turns out that this version of the game only gave players three lives in order to complete the game. That's three lives total, as in no continues whatsoever, meaning that you'd need to technically beat the game twice on three lives with no continues to consider this game polished off. No thanks. Number 6. Multiple Mega Man Games – NES to GameCube Mega Man is a bloody lovely chap, and is actually doing the rounds at the moment with Mega Man 11, which is a rather lovely title. However, that's not to say that the Blue Bomber has managed to get through all of his iterations without losing some parts along the way. Yes, it seems that the new robot master, Terrible Port Man, hit the GameCube especially hard when the Mega Man Anniversary Collection hit its tiny disc space back in 2004. Now, the collection was meant to have Mega Man 1 to 8 and 2 Japanese exclusives on the disc, but for some reason, a lot of features were were removed in the process, most notably the boss rush mode from Mega Man's 1 to 3, mission mode from Mega Man 4 to 6, and a ton of music tracks were dropped entirely, making some sections play out in silence and others use music that simply didn't suit. Another bizarre removal is that you can't unlock hard mode for the titles, which is just downright strange, and the credit sequences, which not only pay respect to those who created the titles, but also those who converted them as well, were entirely removed. I mean, what with all these missing features, maybe they were just a little embarrassed? Either way, it's a massive shame to see him done over, although maybe Street Fighter X Tekken still paints him in a worse light. Number 5. Blood Bowl – PC to Xbox 360 so you guys have probably noticed in some of my videos that I often praise the Orc and the Mork that are Games Workshop and Warhammer. Yes, I'm a 31-year-old man who cannot get enough of building small fantasy models and painting them. I realize it's sad, but then I go to my job doing voiceovers and talking about video games and somehow I'm okay with this. Anyway, Blood Bowl is basically Warhammer's version of American football, and while Blood Bowl 2 is a near-perfect mix of tactics and good old let's actually kill this player fun, the first game which had been ported from the PC to the Xbox 360 had a pretty glaring omission. It removed online league play. Oh, that seems like a good idea, right? In a game which follows the same conventions as the NFL and therefore is basically built around league play, surely removing that feature would have been at the top priority list of things not to have happen. Well, unfortunately, that's what the 360 players got, and it robs the title of a huge factor of why you'd even get this in the first place. Number 4. Multiple Tony Hawk's games to the N64 this one is actually a rather painful series of entries, not solely because the N64 owners got absolutely punted in the face multiple times with several lesser ports, but also because this is Tony Hawk's we're talking about. Yes, I know the games nowadays have gone downhill quicker than you and after he had a sniff of the Alco Pops, but when this started out, this was a franchise that was like an adrenaline shot to the eyes, and no, do not try that at home. Because of the lower storage space, a ton of changes had to be made to Tony Hawk's 1 to 3 for the N64, most notable of which was the in-game soundtrack, which was completely hacked apart. Tracks wouldn't even have vocals in in some instances, and in others would repeat again after the first verse. In a game which is rightly lauded for its awesome OSTs, this was a real disappointment for many. Then there were the other limitations, such as muddy graphics and a draw distance much shorter than that on the PS1, which could and would scup a brilliant runs time and again. Also, there was a total absence of cutscenes in the game, and I don't know about you, but unlocking the Bales video or the little line trick videos was one of the best things to get after a hard day's grinding and being gay youth. It's safe to say that the N64 tried valiantly to make the rebellious youth feel alive on the console, but in delivery was like trying to watch your granddad skate. And my granddad is dead. Brilliant. Number 3. Fear – Xbox 360 to PS3 
F to the E to the A to the R was a rather brilliant little title released originally on the PC and then ported to the Xbox 360 and the PS3. The 360 got away relatively unscathed with just a bit of graphical downgrade, but much of the scary moments transitioned in one piece. However, when it came to the PS3 version, the only thing terrifying about the title was just how much of a botch job was done in the porting. For a start, there was already an issue with expectations of the port seeing as it arrived six months after the Xbox 360 version. In between these points, DLC and tweaks to be made to the game and therefore there was a built-in desire to see the complete version. However, when it arrived, fans were gutted to see a title with about as much content as the plate of scraps that I feed you in every week, performance issues that make me seem like a f god in comparison, and reduced graphics in both frame rate and visual performance. And lest we not forget, the PS3 was pushed as a graphical powerhouse upon its launch, and this was one of the first titles for the console to be ported across. It didn't bode well for fans of the series, nor the developers. Number 2. Resident Evil 4 – GameCube to PC I honestly don't know how this port ended up bailing so hard on delivering what is easily one of the best Resident Evil games, and say it with me kids, OF ALL TIME! Yet in 2007 Capcom managed the impossible. And it all comes down to control. Now there's some absolute heathens out there that don't like the tank controls of Resi games, and fair play to them, I've got some pretty terrible opinions as well sometimes. However, in Resi 4, the devs did their best to update their moves and incorporated an over-the-shoulder view. Yet trying to actually play in this form on the PC with the default control scheme is the most painful thing in the game, and let's not forget this is a title which sees you get a chainsaw to the head sometimes. So you're probably thinking, that's not too bad, right? I can just rebind the keys. Well, says I, if you do and make the game easier for yourself in this regard, it removes the prompts for quick time events, meaning that when Johnny Boulder comes trying to roll over Leon's perfect emo fringe, you won't know which button to mash in order to get away. Oh, how fun, right? So yeah, that one simple mistake is how you take something brilliant and absolutely butcher it. Now this was fixed further down the line, but upon its release, this was the real rotten corpse of the bunch. And number one, Pac-Man, arcade to the Atari 2600. It had to be this, right? It's a moment that for many exemplified the great video game crash of the 1980s, as it was a moment of greed, laziness, and a betrayal of the video game player fanbase. Back in the day, Pac-Man was one of the most popular arcade games of the era, eating more coins than that rogue fortune-telling machine down the pier that keeps telling me that I'm gonna die an agonizing death. And yet I keep giving it money. Namco had made 400,000 arcade units, but made best of friends with Atari when they signed a deal to port the game over to the Atari 2600. It's since gone down as one of the worst examples of any port ever. The game not only managed to be rife with bugs, but it looked absolutely sh** and was kicked out so quickly that developer Todd Fry couldn't figure out how to have four ghosts on screen at once. So instead, he just worked with two at a time, phasing them in and out as they do. In a brilliant moment of idiocy, Atari made seven million copies of the game. That's more than the actual consoles of the 2600 that they had in circulation at the time, as they believed that the game was going to boost sales of the units. It backfired when the game was revealed to be so terrible, and just like that, Pac-Man for the 2600 went on into infamy. And there we go, those were 10 ports that absolutely butchered the original titles. Let me know what you thought about them down in the comments section below, and yes, go swing by shop.whatculture.com and pick yourself up a one per list t-shirt. As always, I've been Jules, you can follow me at RetroJ with a zero over on Twitter. You've been awesome, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye!